first thing we need to do is configure the engine to properly work with the mobile platform. Per default, there are several settings that are turned off in the engine that should actually be on. So before we can do anything, we have to make sure that the editor and the engine in general are properly set up to do the work that we are going to do. You look in the install directory of the UDK, and then you have these four folders. There's a number of ENI files in engine and in UDK game. We have to edit those ENI files in order to optimize the engine for mobile use. Uh, there's quite a few of quite a few ENI files to go through, quite a few settings as well. So included in this video, I've included my own ENI files from the February uh, UDK, February, February 2013. So you have my own ENI files as a reference, but I'm gonna step through all the changes that you should be doing. First of all, if you open engine and then config, then uh, you can see these files here. If you open base system settings, then uh, you'll get this file. And you can see base system settings contains all the uh, performance settings on all platforms of the game and the engine in general. So for example, you can see here, if you scroll through somewhere, on an iPhone 3GS, it will set these settings on or off. So you can uh, define the performance platform per platform, turn things on and off. And there's a number of important properties here. First of all, have a look for mobile feature level. So mobile feature level zero. This should be zero as it is, but you might want to set this to one on low end devices. So you might want to copy paste this line down to, for example, uh, iPhone 3GS. And you might want to add that line over here. So all of this works in a way that this is based on that. And then that one in turn is based on something else. So this own, if you add a property here, it will override whatever is set in the beginning of the file. If you do not add anything to it, it will just use whatever property is set in the beginning of the file. So for example, over here we can see mobile environment mapping is true. Well, if that line is not present over here in the bottom, at the bottom, then it will assume that mobile environment is true for an iPhone 5 as well. So it's only when you manually add a line and change the setting that you can go away from the default settings at the top of the file. So in this case, I've added mobile feature level zero to iPhone 3GS. Let's make that one. This is basically uh, the biggest quality setting you have available. If you set this to zero, it means high quality. If you set it to one, it means low quality. That's pretty much it. So simply adding mobile feature level one to your low end devices, for example, an iPhone 3GS is low end, an iPhone 4 is low end, an iPod Touch 4th generation is low end, an iPad 1 is low end, etc. If you add that line to those devices, the game will run in low end mode on those devices, meaning it will not use complex materials, it will just forget about everything but simple diffuse textures, basically, and the simplest features. So that's one important thing to do. Uh, another one would be color grading and this is actually off per default and should really really be on so you can see at the top of the file because uh, this is part of the main category at the very top at the top of this file you can see mobile color grading false this should be on if, if you do not turn this on you cannot use uh, post processing at its fullest so you should type true there instead the performance impact of having this enabled is quite minimal anyway, so you pretty much want this enabled on everything but the, low, the slowest devices you have. Another one that's quite nice is, and this is also a PC feature and not just mobile, detail level, uh, sorry, detail mode. You have detail mode 2 here. This is the amount of world detail in the game. So if it's 2, it means it will show all the detail in the geometry and in the particles, etc. All the world detail in general. If you put this to 1, it will mean it will use medium quality. 0 is low quality. And I will show you how this works later on in Unmechanical. 
but basically what we've done in our mechanical is leave it to 2 per default. So all the high-end devices here at the bottom, for example an iPhone 4S is high-end, we don't add the line to that section, therefore it will use 2, because 2 is defined at the top of the file. But for low-end devices, for example an iPhone 4, which is considerably slower than a 4S, we would add the de de uh, detail mode 0. Again, this will become more clear later on when I can show you an example in Unmechanical. We will first have to go through some of the other content, but uh, this is a major feature. Um, another thing that's important is the texturing. And this, the whole any thing can be a bit intimidating because there's a lot of settings as you can see. And the problem also is that it's a lot of uh, hierarchy between the files. So this is based on this. Then that section in turn is based on another section, in turn based on another section, etc. Then you have a couple of ini files based on each other as well. So it's a long step through of parent, child, parent, child, etc. So it can be a bit intimidating to get through all of this. But it is absolutely essential. If you would not have changed the ini files for a mechanical, the game would have absolutely run twice as bad. Anyhow, another very important section are the texture settings. You can see at the top of the file, you will have this list a couple of times in, in here. But uh, the one at the, the highest in the file, you have this uh, block of texture group settings. This defines the maximum resolution it can have. You can see this is for PC. If you now scroll down a bit, see this is for screenshots, not important. Scroll down further, then we reach system settings mobile texture bias. This is for mobile. And you can see what happens per default, what Epic did, is they set, for example, world textures. These are your normal world textures. This is the most common category. It says the, maximum, the minimum size is 1, which is not actually true because there's a hardware limit of, I believe, 8 by 8. I believe the minimum resolution is 8 or 16 or something. In any case, maximum resolution is 4096. But then, most importantly, it says lot bias 1. And this also ties into what we've done in, the, in my uh, asset development video, the first one and the second one. A lot of this will tie into that as well. So you might want to go through all of that first to understand the texturing system in Unreal. In any case, what Lot Bias 1 does is it will automatically halve the texture by one step. So if the texture is 1024 originally, it will display on 512 if Lot Bias is 1. If Lot Bias is 2, it will display all world textures on 256 if the original is 1024. So this is the number of times it steps it down. You can see per default, Epic makes sure that every texture in the game is automatically halved the moment it gets put on a mobile device. That might not be what you want to do. It depends kind of how you build up the game, but for a mechanical, we didn't do this, I believe. So I'm gonna set everything to zero here. So go through and type load bias zero for all of these. Again, you don't have to, it really depends on the kind of game you're doing, but for now I would advise you to do this so we can get the best quality out of this video. We're not going to run out of memory anyway with a small level like this. So to get the best quality out of it, I've brought everything back to zero, meaning it will not resize anything. So you would type this everywhere true, and what you can even do is, and this is what we did for mechanical as well, we put it on zero per default for mobile, but then again on the low end devices, for example on an iPhone 3GS, we pasted the whole set section in again and we put everything on two. So it steps down twice. Because some of these low end devices, they have very little memory available, so you do want to scale down there. Plus the screens are quite small anyway, so you're not even going to see a 1024 texture. A 256 is probably going to look the same. So if you want, again, you don't have to, it really depends on the game, but this will probably help. So you can add it again for each of these sections. Not for an iPhone 4S, but for the low-end devices. Also, you have this one here, mobile max memory. So you can set the maximum memory allowed per device. You can pretty much copy-paste that for every device you have and set just how much it can take. There's also something you can do to help, help out on. 
And you can see for the high-end devices, what Epic did is you have Bloom True and Depth of Field True. They're commented auto. If you were to comment those in, like so, so take away the whatever you want to call that in English, but take that away in front of it, then it will allow Bloom and Depth of Field on an iPhone 4S. This has like a 30% or so performance impact. So the performance impact is really big, but you can manage this on an iPad 3, iPad 4, that kind of generation can render it just fine. Again, on a mechanical, we turned this on for an iPad 3 and an iPad 4 and an iPhone 5, but everything else has this off. Some other things as well, light shafts. I don't tend to use this, especially not on mobile. It takes a bit too much performance. I don't think it's very pretty anyway. Uh, you can have some very simplistic mobile shadows here, which I, which I turn off in a mechanical because you don't really see it and it doesn't really look good at all. And it just takes performance. So I tend to turn that off. And then all of this is irrelevant as well. Then one other very important property though is mobile content scale factor. The mobile content scale factor is basically the resolution of the game on the iPad or the iPhone, etc. So if it's two, it will do two times the standard resolution for that device. Okay, so and that standard resolution is set per device family. So it's not the actual resolution of the device. So for example, uh, I forgot exactly what resolution is of an iPhone 4S, but let's take an iPad then, which I remember. So you can see, for example, an iPad 2 has a mobile content scale factor of 1. It renders at the resolution of the device. An iPad 2 has a resolution of 1024 by 768. And because content scale factor is 1, it means the game will render at 1024 by 768. However, if you then look at an iPad 3, this has a content scale factor of 1.4, etc. Right, so if I then take this in here for a moment. I do this times 1024, so it's 1044, and it's 768 by the same number, so it's 1440 times 1080, that's the resolution it uses on an iPad 3. It takes the default resolution for that family, and an iPad, Unreal regards all iPads to have resolution 1024 by 768, and then it multiplies it with this number. So on an iPad 2, it doesn't multiply it, it's just, it's the same. But on an iPad 3, it scales up the game to 1440 times 1080. And on an iPad 4, it scales up the game twice. So on an iPad 4, the game renders on 1024 times 2 is 2048, and 768 times 2 is 1536. This is not the same as the resolution of the, I the iOS device per default. So I believe an iPad 3 also runs on 1, 000, uh, 2048 by 1536. However, Unreal will render the game in a lower resolution than the actual native resolution of the device. It's able to do that and it actually saves quite a lot of performance. So again, for a mechanical, we messed around a bit with this, it's not the biggest thing, but especially for low end, in order to get the game to run, so for example an iPod, uh, an iPhone 4 was particularly bad. In order to get the game to run, it's currently set to uh, 2.0. We actually set it to 0, 0 0.75, for example. We scaled it down and the game got very jaggy. You get very jaggy edges because you're basically playing on a resolution of like 320 by 240 or whatever it is. I mean, you get a very, very low resolution, but it'll run and it'll run considerably better than the default 2. So if you're in need of performance, try beginning to scale down mobile content scale factor to say 1.5 or 1.25 or 1. Step it down and see at what point performance gets better and still don't make sure the game doesn't run too jaggy. Um, the reason why some of these numbers are rather weird, like this one for example, is because it's actually even though the number looks weird, if you do 1024 times 09375, you have 9, 960, which is still a very nice number. If they would have done 1024 times uh, 9, it would have been 921 and 0 0.6 of a pixel, which is impossible. 
So the numbers sometimes look a bit weird, but uh, they actually go for nice numbers. If you calculate it, you will get nice numbers, and that's how you should be doing it. So the next step under 0 0.9375 would have been, um, I think, 875 or so. Well, then you get 896 in these, so that works. So that's how you calculate a number. And for iPad, the default resolution for Unreal is 1024 by 768. I believe for an iPhone, it takes the resolution of an iPhone 4, which I forgot right now, but it's something in the line of 640 or so, I believe. Actually, you can see it in Unreal. I think actually the iPhone 3GS, this is the default. 480 by 320. So if it says content scale factor 1 on any iPhone device, it will render on this, as far as I know, etc. So it, it's kind of working like that. But uh, content scale property is has a major impact on performance as well. And then one other smaller thing, not that important, but it does help, is you have a particle lot property in here. So particle lot bias currently set to zero. If you type one there, it will render all of the particles at the second lot level. So it renders all of the particles with a lot in lower detail. And again, this is also something that we did for a mechanical. So we made the PC version render particles on lot zero, and we made the mobile version render particles on lot one. So we would have copy pasted the line to one of the mobile sections. You can do this per device as we've been doing, but you could also add it to the main system settings mobile. These are the general settings for mobile. You can also add it somewhere over here. It doesn't really matter where, as long as it's in this section. And you type 1. Again, this is probably quite a lot of information, quite confusing if you're new to the INI system. It's not very intuitively made either. Uh, so to recap on all of this, most important right now, in order to actually do this video is you must have color grading enabled. If you do not have that enabled, you cannot do this at all. And optionally, you might want to enable depth of field and bloom in your iPad 3 or iPad 4 or iPhone 5. If you want to mess with that as well, just currently off per default. Take away the little uh, thing in front to enable it. That's the most critical things. The other things are more for performance and the other things I'll recap later on. So you can close that and uh, save it. So that's, that was base system settings. Now we've done base system settings. That's basically how the game renders, how it looks, all the performance settings. Then very important as well is in the engine ini we should cache pvrtc textures and there's also a couple of things we have to do in the editor settings those things are not we're not going to do in the main folder so what you see here this is in the engine folder config engine config this is these are the main master settings of the entire engine and thus the game it runs there is a second group of ini files in udk game config and these are the ini files used by the game. So it's two sets. And again, this is very confusing if you're new to it because there's so many files and there's so many properties and everything has a certain hierarchy, which is completely unclear if you're new to it. So this is really confusing. But these files are the, chi the children of the files in engine. So these are top level and then it steps down gradually. So these are the highest, second in level are these three folders. Uh, actually, mobile is second in level, where you have another set of ini files. Then iPhone is below the mobile level, where you have another set of ini files. Then below that is UDK game slash config. So then you have all of these files. Below that, again, you have mobile over here as well. And below that, you have iPhone with these ones. And once installed, it uses these. So it's incredibly frustrating and confusing. So
So to make sense out of this, let's go quickly go back to engine config. In mobile, here we have mobile system settings ini. Let's look at that. You can see this does nothing. That's fine. This is what we want to have. If something would have been added here, that would be overriding the settings set we just set in the base systems uh, settings ini. So we don't want this. We want this to be en empty. That's correct. So it doesn't interfere with anything. And then let's check the iPhone one. And here we see we do have a lot of things in here. And then the problem is, because this is the child of base system settings ini, any property set in here will override the, set, the property set in the previous file. So what we did for our mechanical is pretty much just to keep it more manageable, this. You just delete it, you clear it out, and you set all the properties correctly in the base system settings ini so we have a single file that handles all of it. Because it's way too confusing as Epic has set it up. You might not want to do that right now, but it's something to keep in mind. Just make sure that the color grading here is enabled and it's not mentioned. If I search for it, not mentioned, that's fine. Therefore, it will not override interfere with that. So that's fine. But again, I would just clear it out so we have a single unified location for all the settings instead of this very fragmented approach. And then let's have a look at uh, UDK game. Config. Um, here is the same problem. Let's check mobile. That's good. That's empty. We want to have it empty. Uh, engine has some things in there. But that's fine. We'll leave that be. And an iPhone system settings here as well. This enables bloom and depth of field for the, the highest the most powerful devices. So this is correct. That's fine. You could you could be clearing this out as well, but it's only a few settings here. So that's good. So then we're set for the next step. The next step is we're gonna go for default engine here. So find default engine.ini in UDK game slash config. Open that. And now very importantly you're looking for cache PVRTC or TRC. No it's RTC, sorry. RTC. You're looking for this section, mobile support, and this property. Make sure this is enabled. This is off per default. So per default it looks false. You need to type true here. If you do not do that, it might the editor might not be saving mobile textures. PVRTC is a mobile texture format. So if this is off, it will not properly handle mobile texture format. So make sure this is enabled in the default engine.ini. Um, if that's not present, you can always add it yourself. So you might not have this present in your file. I already typed it over here. In that case, you can simply type these couple of lines anywhere in the file in its own section. So just type this anywhere you want as it is. Especially, actually, the, the last three lines are not that important. This is the most important part, the type. So type this anywhere in the default engine.ini file. Furthermore, then we have another one to fix up is um, default light mess. So open default light mess in here. And in that one, you might want to set, or you might want to type actually, because there's nothing defined right now. But what you might want to type are these two settings. So repack light and shadow map textures true, and play area height. Well, that's maybe a bit of a large number, but something like that, 512. What the first one does is it will make sure that the light maps and the shadow maps that uh, light mass calculates will be square in resolution, or he's going to attempt to make it square in resolution. And square textures are essential for mobile hardware. This is something we'll get back to in a few minutes. So by enabling this, it will create better uh, light maps better suited for mobile hardware. So that should be on. It's off by default. And then secondly, this is the the height of the pre computed visibility blocks. This is something we'll do roughly halfway through the video, but for the time being you can already type something like 4-500 there. 
as a start number. And then we'll get back to that later on. So those are two important settings as well. Then lastly, and this you could technically do in the editor as well. Make sure, by the way, that while you do all of this, the editor is turned off, or at the very least you restart it after all of this work. You should preferably not be editing any files while the editor runs, because it might ignore your changes in some cases. Anyhow, next up is um, the editor settings. And this is something we could technically be doing in the editor as well, but while we're at it, might as well just set it over here. I usually set it in the any files, so that when we work in a team, I can ensure that everyone in the team has the same settings I have, rather than having to tell that person, can you now click that button in the editor. So you're looking for pretty much this one, but uh, the default one. So again, the ones with UDK in front of it, those are the, ch the children of the default ones. They're generated based on the default ones and they're generated on runtime. So you can pretty much just delete them if you want. And then the next time you start the editor, so I would be able to re delete them now. The next time you start the editor, it will just regenerate them based on the default ones. So it's the default ones you want to be working with. And we're looking for the default version of this one, uh, which is there, default editor user settings. Here it's very important that we have this enabled. This is probably not typed either, so you probably will have to type this somewhere in your file as well. Always optimize content for mobile. That's off per default and again absolutely essential if you want to do mobile development. If you do not, do not use this, and if you do not use the cache PVRTC texture property either, then it will still work on mobile, but then the engine is going to do fast compressions. It's not going to do proper compressions on your textures and your light maps. It's going to do a very fast and low quality compression. So if you don't enable this, you cannot get decent quality out of it.